Now there's a number of different ways of printing our mix. The first one I'm going to show you is the bounce to disk function. It is located under the file menu and it's called bounce to disk. And a great advantage to it is it has the ability of changing what is the destination format to various different types. Now in order to use this feature you have to highlight the audio that you want bounced or recorded to disk. And in this case I want the complete song. So I'm going to select the song from the end fade all the way to the beginning. And then we're going to go up under our file menu and select the bounce to disk function. And the bounce to disk window will open and give us a variety of options for our destination file. Starting with the bounce source, I've got it selected to digital left and right output, which matches the digital left and right output of my master fader. It is important that these two match, otherwise you might be recording audio or just silence from some other area. And by just clicking on the window, we can reassign our outputs for our bounce source. Now file type allows me to change the file type destination as well. And I have many options here as well, including WAVE, MP3, AIFF, and SD2, which is the old sound designer format. Next is how do we want this file type to show up? I've selected stereo interleaved, which will take the left and right signals and merge them into one file. You can also record them as mono or mono input files. Next is our destination bitrate, and here it's set at 24-bit, but I'm going to bounce the source to 16-bit so that it's ready for a standard CD. Now if you're bouncing audio to go to a mastering facility, you would want to save it in its highest resolution possible. In this case, our session is 48K 24-bit, so I would bounce this file as a 48K 24-bit file, since it's the highest quality that I recorded the original audio from. Now for a CD quality bounce, I want to adjust the settings to 44.1 16-bit, which is the standard CD format. Now by doing this, I'm having to convert what is the sample rate and adjust the bit rate in order for this to be compatible. Now with the conversion quality, we have a sample rate converter within Pro Tools, and my settings would be best set at Tweakhead, which is the most accurate settings. It will take a little bit more processor power and a little bit more time, but it's the best quality. Now with the bit rate, we have to compensate a little differently. The first thing that I have to do is insert a dither plugin on the master stereo channel. I'm going to adjust the settings for 16 bit. Basically what's happening here is the last eight bits of my 24 bit audio are being analyzed and averaged and will determine what bit 16 is going to end up as in a binary number. This will help to compensate a little bit for the additional accuracy that a 24-bit file would give us. And the main difference between 24-bit and 16-bit files would show up more on the quieter elements of the song, be it the fade out or the sound tails off say a piano note fading off or on the fade out of our reverb or ambience. So this dither plugin helps to compensate and give us a little bit of that advantage in a 16-bit file. Now we still have to set the bit depth in the bounce to disk window as well so that the process knows that the final output of our file will be 16-bit. If you fail to use the dither plugin, what will happen is our bottom 8 bits will just be thrown away and we won't be able to take advantage of the 24-bit file format. So make sure during your bounce to disk functions that you have a dither plugin in place. Now in order to start our process here, all we have to do is click on the bounce button. It will open up what is the file window so that we can label what the name of our bounce is going to be and select our destination. And typically I create a new folder that says stereo mixes and put all my mixes in there. So all I have to do after that is select save and the bounce function will start. It will take the duration of the song to do the process. And when it's done, the song file can be found in the folder that we labeled Stereo Mixes.